from University Gym, it's sold out here in Muncie, Indiana. Number one in the MAC, Ohio University on the road. They are three and one in the MAC, 13 and four for the year. They are seven and one right now in the MAC. While Ball State comes in at eight and nine, they are four and four in the conference. And Daryl Hedrick, right now, Ohio University's got a lead on Toledo, on Miami, on Kent State. Those three teams at five and three, and a victory here for Ohio would be certainly a big boost for them. Well, a win for Ball State certainly would put them uh, over the 500 mark and get them right back in the race. Sure would, Kevin. Big basketball game. If a high you could pick this up and get another road win, it could be tough for uh, the rest of the team to catch up. Leading the green of Ohio University will be Robert Tatum, a six-foot cat-like quick guard from Columbus, Ohio. What's he do well there? Well, I think he does everything well. Uh, he broke his hand five games into the season, and I think that uh, the reason for their 7-1 record is the fact that uh, he's able to score, he passes, he sets the offense up, he makes a high you go. Ohio used one six in a row, but Ball State, keep in mind, six and two for the year here at home. They are three and one currently, uh, or make that three and one Ohio University out on the road in the MAC. Now Dan Palabizio, of course, is uh, no secret to anybody that follows college basketball. Number one in the nation in scoring, 28 points per, and he's number eight in the country in rebounding with 11 boards per game. The decision will be how will Ohio University decide to defense him? Will they try to put two men? Will they go ahead and try to do a good job on him, let him have some points, and keep the rest of the uh, uh, Ball State players from scoring? That's going to be the uh, decision that they're going to have to make. Well, Ball State's coming off a 93-89 overtime loss at Miami. We'll tell you about that game. There were some interesting numbers that will inform you of when we return to the University Jam in Muncie, Indiana, the site of this Ball State-Ohio University hookup, live here on Sports Time. Sports time, you're on with All-American College Basketball. Americans play. Well, the Cats of Ohio University here in Muncie, Indiana to take on the Cardinals of Ball State. And with the introduction of the starting lineup, we go to the house announcer, John Hartley. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the athletic department at Ball State University, we welcome you to University Gymnasium. Tonight's Mid-American Conference matchup features our visitors from Ohio University and your Ball State Cardinals. Let's meet tonight's starting lineups with alternating introductions. First off, for the Bobcats of Ohio University, at guard, a six-foot junior from Columbus, Ohio, number 20, Robert Tato. For Ball State, at guard, a 6'4 junior from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, number 20, Larry Lee. For the 
Bobcats at guard, a 6'3 junior from Brooklyn, New York, number 30, Paul Barron. In the backcourt for the Cardinals, a 6'3 junior from Danville, Illinois, number 40, Chris Shilton. Starting at center for Ohio, a 6'10 sophomore from Lodeville, Illinois, number 44, Richard Stenfeld. Starting in the middle for Ball State, a 6'5 senior from Lodeville, Indiana, number 34, Mike Schitzer. And forward for the Bobcats, a 6'3 senior from Franklin, Furnace, Ohio, number 10, Rick Scarberry. At forward for the Cardinals, a six foot four freshman from South Bend, Indiana, number 22, Gary Whistley. And at forward for Ohio University, a six six senior from Lewisburg, North Carolina, number 45, Eddie Hicks. Coach of the Cardinals in his third season, Al Brown. Well, they love their basketball in Indiana here in Muncie, especially so when you've got a native son, Dan Palombizio, leading the country in scoring 28 per and number eight in the country in rebounding. Palombizio, of course, started off at Purdue, spent a couple of years there, redshirted last year, and this will be the first of two years here in the Muncie campus, and Dan's got the tooth out, and he means business. This was a very rugged game, Ball State coming off of into this contest, as we get a look at the officials tonight. The officials had their hands full on Saturday evening in Miami when there was a total of 85 free throws handed out in that overtime loss, Ball State of Miami, and a total of 57 personal fouls, including six technical fouls. A very physical game, Darrell. Sure was. They had uh, three holdings and two, two blocking and charging fouls and, and uh, four 15-yard penalties in there, Kevin. <laughs> Mike Chester goes to the middle out of Noblesville, Indiana. He'll tip it up against Richard Stanfield. Stanfield filling in for Victor Alexander, and it's highly unlikely we'll see Alexander this evening. Although we could be in for some surprises along those lines. Is that a shin problem and a lower calf problem on the other leg? So both the right and left wheels ailing for Alexander. All state basketball, and we're in the early going. Glad you're with us. And this one from the University Gym in Muncie, Indiana. Cats fall back in the zone. They're playing a they're playing a two-three zone, and uh, Ball State's trying to have a lot of patience going through that. Palombizio had it inside, but it's poked free. Ball State will wheel it back outside. Larry Reed handling the basketball, along with Chris Shelton. Reed is 6'4 junior from Milwaukee. Shelton is 6'3 junior from Danville, Illinois. Now to Palombizio. Stanfield came over the top for the foul. And the officials on this one right from the opening tap. In light of that game Saturday, Darrell, I think the league will maybe play a little tighter in this game. Well, I, th I think what they're going to do is just going to be forcing them to watch the post play and and to and to make sure that uh, looks like we have may have a uh, Danny's up uh, right. talking about something. And the I don't clock had been restarted for the foul. Danny saying that it should not be restarted. Al Brown coming down here to midcourt along with Danny Nee. Remember during a dead ball and a question of a correctable error. The officials are allowed out of that 28-foot box. That's correct. Danny Nee now in his fifth year at Ohio University. And I just think they're going to watch the post play, Kevin. They'll try to keep a good handle on this uh, ball game. Uh, and this could be, a, as we mentioned, this could be a very physical. It's going to be a good, exciting basketball game. 
Shelton had the inbounds pass to Reed, and why he didn't just lay it in, I don't know. He tried to give off once he got to midair. He had an easy two, it appeared, from this angle. A minute gone, no score. Ohio's first touch of the basketball on the offensive end. Paul Barron. Tops in the league and assists the seven per, handling the basketball. High post with it, Eddie Hicks. This is Barron to Stanfield. Ball poke three by Shelton, picked up by Ball State. With it, Derek Wesley all the way into the lane, fouled by Barron. He'll step to the line for two. Here we're gonna, you get a chance to see the drive. He's uh, going, he, he grabs his wrist. It was a good call. As a matter of fact, he was fouled by both players. Good call. Derek Wesley at the line is 78 for center from South Bend, Indiana, Riley High School. No score. They're in Ball State, Muncie, Indiana. Packed house here, better than 7,000. They're talking about maybe having the best crowd that they've had. And here comes the toilet paper. As is custom, here in Muncie, they're going to litter the floor. Toilet paper coming from every angle. Kevin. Now, Darrell, this is something we talked about earlier in the year. I think this ought to be an automatic technical or a warning, and the second time it happens, the home team gets the tech. Well, the only trouble with that is suppose the opponents throw it out. Excuse well. me, Kevin. i got to go help clean this up. <laughs> That's a good point you make. 18.42 remaining, and they're going to clear the paper. Kevin, now, they have given the warning. Apparently. Kevin, let's go forget now. A high university is going to change defenses. Ball State is basically going to, when they're in a particular man, they'll stay there. If they're in a zone, they'll stay. Oh, you will change up and down the floor. We're getting a little full court pressure from uh, Ball State. It's a 2 2 1 press. Robert Tatum, the man we featured at the top, loops it across midcourt to Paul Barron with 119 assists in 17 games. I think Tatum really makes this a high university basketball team go. Barron tried to slip it to Hicks, tapped out of bounds by Larry Reed. 1-0 the score, Ball State leading on a free throw by Derek Wesley with 18.30 remaining in the first half. North Carolina averaging 10 a game. Good shooter. 57% from the field. High universities in a half court trap, which they will be from time to time and try to change up. You'll see that the whole ball game from a high U. Back zone. I imagine they'll try to keep that real close. You see a guy in front, a guy behind of uh, uh, Palmbizio. Rebound of Palmbizio. Catches it long, takes it to the base. Alley oops it up, misses on the. Second attempt foul, and it's whistled on Rick Scarberry. Let's take it from the rebound, Darrell. Yeah, here you see the, the shot. Now Palmbizio gets it, and there's no question what he's going to do. He goes right to the hoop. He's going to miss it. He'll get it back, and then he's uh, fouled from the backside, and it was a good call. Uh, Scarberry uh, fouled him from the rear. Now you're gonna you're gonna catch a higher university. They're gonna they're gonna force Ball State to hit on the outside early. Shelton from long range. That's what they'll have to do, Kevin. The pull that. Three two the score. 17 and a half minutes to go in the first half of play. Al Brown, the coach of Ball State. The kids to keep the stuff off the floor. Danny Lee wants a technical right now. Lee is beside himself in front of that Ohio bench. Really chewing on the officials. He wanted a tech. Paul Barrett across midcourt. 3 2 the score. Ball State leading by one. Hicks, make that Tatum. Robert that's Tatum. That's what Tatum can do. Half court, uh, half court, one two, one one press. 
They're going to try to bother Ball State, and then uh, and then they're going to call back and uh, cut the area. Wesley tried to push it in there where Chesser had double team defense on him. Tap free by Barrett. Bearcats control Stansel down low. Scarberry getting the benefit of that pass to the corner with his first two and six three to score Ohio U up by three. Well Tatum and, and uh, Barron and Scarberry can shoot it on the outside. They're good shooters. Now you can see that in close defense. They're trying to keep a man in front and a man behind and, and drop. Quick as that ball goes in, goes in from the perimeter, you'll see those OU guards. Everybody's going to the ball. That time Scarberry came in to help out, collapsed on the ball and tapped it away. Tom Beasy will think he'll be wearing green before the night's over. <laughs> It'll rub off. It sure will. Tom Beasy, a soft right-handed hook from the baseline. Not there. The follow by Wesley. Tap free. Here comes Barron on the breakout. Tatum looking for Hicks. Eddie open on the blocks. Turn around. Jumper blocked by Chester. But Tatum there to pick it up. Fires misses. Tom Beasy with his second board of the game. The average is 14 per in Mid-American Conference play. 11 overall. Shelton dishes to the corner, rams into a man, and the foul is called on the offensive man, Chris Shelton. And you know, Dan's a leading scorer not only in the nation, naturally in the Mid-American, with a 28-7 and 11 rebounds of all games. So he's doing yeoman work. 6-3 the score, Ohio University leading Ball State with 15-50 remaining in the first half. We'll be back with more of this live action on Sports Time following these announcements. So how the teams stack up for the year, statistically? Well, their field goal percentage is even, free throws about the same, uh, rebounds, Ball State's uh, lead there, and, and so the, the stats are, are uh, pretty even. Uh, Ball State's uh, uh, really, uh, you know, averaging about nine more points on the ball game, but uh, OU's uh, one of the top teams defensively. Scarberry misses from the head of the circle. Chris Shelton on his way down the floor. 6-3 the score. Ohio University leading by three. 15-29 remaining. Well, they're really packing it in the uh, into the uh, keyhole area. The, this OU defense. Palombizio's yet to score. Barron lead pass to Scarberry. Tatum. Gonna go to the defensive man. The basket counts, and Tatum goes to the line. The foul is on Larry Reed. You're gonna see uh, as he penetrates, he takes a move, turns it. Reed doesn't get his feet set, and uh, he's still moving when uh, Tatum goes up and shot. Chance for the three-point play. Excellent free throw shooter as well as field goal shooter. Tatum, Tatum an 81 through center from Northland High School in Columbus. He's got five points, Daryl, and 9-3 yeah. the spread He's a very highly sought after high school basketball player. He, like I said, I think he's the glue that makes OU go. He also gets these things of assists. He runs the show. Smart ball player. Chris Shelton. He's not afraid to put it up from long range. Barron's got the rebound. They say Eddie Hicks pushed off to get open. And that backdoor flip from Barron. And it's Eddie's first foul. I think the officials are going to try to keep, uh, uh, to stay on top of this basketball game. Because the word gets around the league play of, of all the things that we've talked about, Kevin. There's that half court trap again. Shelton to Palombizio cruising to the blocks. Nice give to Shelton. And he had three seconds in the lane. Violation gifted to Ohio U, 9-3 the score, 14-34 to go. One thing that stands out when you look at Palombizio's numbers, in 17 games, only 18 assists. Well, and here's the man. He's not going to give it up too many times, Kevin. He's going to take it to the hole. Here's the man that will shuttle with Richard Stanfield in the loss of Victor Alexander. This is John Rhodes, a 6'9", 230-pounder from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 
Alexander, remember, out, averaging 16 points, eight rebounds a game. Highly unlikely we'll see him. Here's Rhodes, his first trip down. Yeah, he's Misses. a pretty good sized young man himself. Shot in the other way. Bounces to Chesser, spins away to the baseline. Out back, he'll loop it. 9 3 to score. Ohio, you leading. Adam Bezio giving it off. Barron with a rebound. Ball State is absolutely frigid from the field. OU is staying more in the zone defense. They, they've been a changing team, but they're going to stay in that zone uh, because it's working so well from them. Uh, they're forcing Ball State to shoot on the outside. They've got the coverage they want on Palombizio inside, and so far they've been able to contain it. Foul on Ball State's Larry Reed as he tagged the spinning Paul Barron. This is Rick Scarberry to inbound. Scarberry averaging 12 a game. 6'3", senior from Green High School in Franklin Furnace, Ohio. The alley-oop to Barron. Ball tapped out of bounds by Ball State. And Derek Wesley. And the Bearcats will have it from the end zone. Ball State one of seven from the field, Darrell. John Rhodes, pump faking, missing. Wesley the rebound. 9-3 the score. Ball State trailing here with 13-51 remaining. In the first half, Shelton cross court to Reed. Into the lane, good give to Palombizio. He was hammered and the ball tapped out of bounds. No foul called. Well, here we get a chance to see uh, Sheldon. Try, he's trying that cross court pass. He just take him to the hole trying to get it into Dan. I thought he got a pretty good tip on it too. Got a pretty good block on the ball, Kevin. Good call by the official. Yes. Good left hand. Reed with a great looking left hand. 9-5 to score. 13-32 to go in the first half. Scarberry to Rhodes. Back to Scarberry. He'll flip. Kicks to Rhodes. Well, the ball stake crew wanted three seconds in the lane on Rhodes who had pitched camp down there. He's well, got two. He, uh, I don't think uh, Paul is gonna, uh, you know, I don't think he's gonna foul. Uh, he wants to keep himself out of foul trouble. And, uh, Chesser to the hoop. He's fouled. Oh, you went to sleep defensively on the back side of their uh, zone that time down the floor. I don't know where they got their coverage mixed up. Battles on John Rhodes, Edelson, Mike Chesser from Noblesville, Indiana, a community just north of Indianapolis, which is south of Muncie. In case you're not acquainted with Indiana geography, Chesser was an honorable mention UPI All-State player in his days at Noblesville. Quite a score. He's a 58 percenter from the line. He's a just a steady performer. You know, he he gets you six, seven points, four or five rebounds. Uh, he's a steady performer. 11-6 the score. Ohio University leading. 12-52 remaining in the first half. Ball State's still staying with their man-to-man -man defense. OU stay in zone. Tatum misses. Palombuzio with a rebound. Wesley posting up gets a foul. Now that was a that was a, a reach and grab. It was a wasted foul that Paul Barron got uh, made that time. And it's the second foul on Barron. Substitutions for Danny Nee's Bearcats. It will come Henry Smith, a promising 6'5 freshman from West Philadelphia, who's quite a rebounder, three points and four rebounds per game. And Eddie Washington also is in the ball game. Eddie is a sophomore, like that a senior, 6'3 from Cleveland, Ohio. Shelton from long range. He's going to have to give that up. Barron the other way, makes it Scarberry drifting into the corner. His ball club up 11 to 6. Here's where Tatum likes that shot off that fast break. Eddie Not Washington. Tatum. Eddie Washington. That fast break is set up to get that cross court pass. OU, OU uses that and very effectively. Other than the man with the ball taking it down the lane as they ordinarily do, they go out wide. That's exactly right. Larry Reed, 
He's got four. 13-8 to score. 11.42 to go, and Palombizio's yet to score. Scarberry. Rick Scarberry, he's got four. There's a cross-court lob to Wesley, into the lane, running left-hander. Wesley's got three. Eddie Washington drifting left of the lane. Tatum with it at the point. Washington again. Wesley the rebound. 15-10 the score. 10.48 remaining in the first half. Reed looking for Palombizio. Two-man play. Palombizio stepped on the end line. Ohio University ball. Stanfield coming back in. For Danny needs Bearcats. As we've got a timeout on the floor with a score. Ohio University 15, Ball State 10, back with more action. After these words, Frederick, your impressions of this first 10 minutes of play in this first half with Ohio leading by 5, 15 to 10. Well, it looks like Ohio University is getting the job done with a 2-3 zone, collapsing zone, forcing Ball State to, to shoot it outside. I don't think uh, Palombizio has scored yet, so it's doing its job. Uh, they're a little impatient offensively, but uh, so far it's going the way OU would like to have it go on the road. Smith. Tatum at the point. 15-10 the score. That timeout, Ball State switched to a 2-3 zone. Stanfell, good-looking turnaround, bank, left hook. He's Richard pretty, Stanfell. He's pretty good-sized young man. Yeah, I've got him listed at 6'10 and 245. At least. <laughs> I don't think he's missed too many meals. Did you say his... Uh, Father is a uh, all right, an assistant coach at uh, Chicago with the Bears. Looks like he could play with the Bears. Wesley. Wesley's got five. Basket's good. We've got a foul out on the floor. After the basket, the foul is on 50 in green, and that's Henry Smith. And, and Ball State will have the ball, Daryl. Yeah, they're going to they're going to call it off. I don't know what he's trying, whether it's after, it's a one and one. It should be the one and one. It was after the basketball, Ball State, or after they play, I should say, after the basket had been made, and Ball State in the bonus will stride to the line, and Palombizio sets up a 74 percenter. Striding to the stripe, 17 12 the score. Ohio University leading Ball State with 9.57 to go in the first half. Here you see uh, he's shooting 53% from the field and 74% for the line. Pretty good shooting. Pretty good shooting figures. Palombizio's lowest outing this year, 18 points against the University of Washington, and he's been under 20 only twice. I noticed that, uh, uh, you know, he's played almost 600 minutes, and, you know, he's taken 347 shots, and the next guy to him is... A is 163. Stanfield walks. Ball State will take it. 17-13 as Danny Nee looks on. Uh, Danny wants to keep his ball club. As long as he can keep ahead, he can keep the crowd out of the ball game, Kevin. He wants to keep the crowd out of the game. So far, he has. So far, Palombizio's first field goal. Many of these fans have been standing since the tap 10 minutes ago. Quick as uh, Palombizio starts scoring, Ball State gets ahead. Watch out. Literally packed to the rafters here at the student's gym. Smith misses the turnaround jump hook, and Ball State can tie it here with nine minutes remaining in the first half. Wesley guns it cross court, Reed midair. The jumper off the mark, over the back. Comes Wesley for the foul. There you see, uh, you, you couldn't see it, but you saw Stanfield and uh, Palombizia going after a little bit on that inside. He got those educated elbows. 
17-15 the score. Ohio University leading. Here's Tatum. That's as good as down from there. Robert Tatum, he's got seven. Average is 16 a game. And the Bobcats have a four-point 19-15 lead with 8.48 remaining in they're the first half. A, they're showing a little 1-2-1-1 uh, one, one, half-court press and falling back into zone. Bothersome, bothersome type of a, of a defense. Chesser, a risky pass to Wesley, but he makes the best of it, gliding into the lane. He's got seven points, Wesley does. 19-17, and again, Ball State within a hoop of the Bobcats from Ohio U. 8.25 remaining in the first half. Timeout about uh, four, uh, three or four minutes ago. Ball State's, uh, they've switched to a zone defense. Look at him crash the board. Look at Stanfield. He had it ripped away by Mike Chesser. Good play by Chesser. Shelton trying to shake and bake. Washington strips him for two, maybe. The goaltending call and the foul and a possible three-point play. Let's see. I don't think he's going to give the basket. Yep, nope. I think he'll have to go to the line, Darrell. You're right. We're seeing the shot. I think he got it. I... Yeah, uh, that was a good call. You know, he got a pretty good block on the ball. He got him with the body, so uh, it was a good call by the official. Washington to the line. He'll have to earn the two. Alan Bezio, his last to the free throw line from the field was one in of five from the field. From the line, Palabizio goes one and two. Let's watch three. this inside. Now watch all, watch the block out. Watch the contact in when this ball goes through. Stanfield, a good job to tap it out back to awaiting Robert Tatum who had rotated back off the line after he missed the free throw. Well, from Ball, Tate, Ball State standpoint, that's a cardinal uh, sin. You missed the free throw and then get the ball back. Tatum, good pump fake. Oh! Rebound batted. Here comes Shelton. He's got a three on one. Reed's got a half dozen ball statement in one. 20-19 the score. Seven and a half minutes remaining here in the first half. That was a picture perfect fast break. A nice feed by Shelton. What's the inside play? There, there they caught the elbows flying by uh, Palombizio. Foul is on Dan Palombizio, his first. That is team foul number six on Ball State. 2019, the score with a timeout on the floor. Ohio University leading in this intense Mid American Conference basketball hookup. And we'll be back with more of it after these words of basketball action on Sports Time tonight. Right after this game, it's NBA Weekly. And then Wayman Tisdale and the Oklahoma State Sooners take on the Colorado Buffaloes live from Boulder, Colorado. Tisdale, of course, was a star of the U.S. Olympic team this past summer and is having a great season. That's NBA Weekly. Then Oklahoma against Colorado tonight here on Sports Time. <laughs> Battle at the University Gym in Muncie, Indiana, 2019, the score. The rebounding edge going to Ball State, Darrell, 14 to 10 to this point. The Bobcats of Ohio University leading by one, 2019. Well, Ball State's an excellent uh, rebounding basketball team. They're tops in the Mid-American, and, and, uh, but yet OU's uh, an excellent defensive team, so, and, and good outside shooting. Ball State's gonna stay in the zone. And uh, what's the physical play inside? Just fo just focus on Stanfell and Pombizio as the balls work that side. They're doing a lot of picking, shoving, and moving in there. Paul Barron with his first two of the ball game, 22-19 the count. Uh, he's a good shooter. He can do that. 6.56 remaining in the first half. Shelton jump passes to Pombizio. He's one of six from the field. Ball State retains possession. Last touch by Paul Barron. Or make it Rick Scarberry. OU stand with her zone in on the OBs even. <laughs> Danny with that turnaround eight-footer. Well, they didn't get the drop help from the guards that time that uh, they've been getting. 
So he fell right into the center, and the guards didn't drop and help. 22-21. Oh, you up. And I'm sure that's what Danny wants these uh, front-line people to do. Scarberry with six, Tatum with seven, Eddie Washington a guard with three. The difference, I think, maybe is perimeter shooting here. Oh, you get them to drop. Uh, they're all excellent shooter. Barron, Tatum, Calabizio. Scarberry, good shooters. Calabizio draws the defense, hook passes out back, it misses, Tatum with it. Bad pass to Barron, Chester's got it. White shirts ahead of him, looking for Shelton, 24-21, OU leading. 5.49 remaining in the first half now. Oh, you will settle it down now and slow the ball game down. Try to eat a little clock. Well, a quicker Mike Chesser at 6'5 got right up on Stanfield and put that one in his face. Got the steal. Ball State ball. The chance yeah. to fold in one here. Stanfield takes a lot of time to get his shot yes, off. Yes, he does. Like a fortnight. <laughs> Jim Flaherty collapsed. Palombizio did what he was supposed to do there when he's double teamed down low. He hit the wingman, but Chester couldn't get the banker to fall. 24 21 now. 4.49 to go. Bobcats lead. Charberry. Mm. It took the wind right out of the sails here the fans at Ball State, 26-21. Well, I think you hit it, Kevin, when you said they're outside shooting. The outside shooting of Ohio University has been very good, and uh, the uh, Ball State, uh, they've warmed up a little bit, but their shooting hasn't been very, uh, very good all night. Twenty-six, twenty-one. Bobcat lead. Calambizio. Ball poked free. Wesley poked it free to Shelton. He came from out of bounds to get it. Fischel was right on top of the play. High University is changing their, their half-court zones. They're going 2-3. They're going match-up. And so it looks like that they're playing standard 2-3 zone, but they're not. They're changing. They're matching up. Uh, dropping and anytime the ball goes over your head they're automatically dropping for the ball the, the the defense is very good and it's very sound Henry Smith along with Eddie Hicks Rick Scarberry Paul Barron and Robert Tatum out there for the Bobcats leading 26 21 Hicks Eddie Hicks says four they're just moving the ball around the perimeter and whoever feels it uh, taking the shot they're all excellent shooters Rick Rowry and Marks Clark back in the lineup for Ball State. Seeing action for the first time. Here's Clark. Clark, a pretty fair player out of another, Indianapolis. Here's another elbow uh, foul on uh, Pombuzio coming off the boards. Second on Pombuzio. One and one. Should shoot it. Goes to the line there. Should shoot it. 28-23, 3.27 remaining. The Bobcats of Ohio University, 7-1 in the MAC, leading Ball State. Remember, a very good team here at home, 6-2, 8-9 and for the year, and 4-4 four and four in the conference. Three teams at 5-3. and three. Behind OU. Very interested in this game tonight. Because well, should OU stumble here, then they've got a shot. We're talking about Toledo, Kent State, Miami. Everybody will be hoping for a Ball State win here to, to keep this road thing because uh, you get uh, the secret in the win conference races is to win them at home yeah. and pick up as many road games you can. And OU's already has already picked up three. Yep. Foul on Hicks. Good call. He was holding down the easier. Second on Eddie. There's Eddie. That was a good call, and it was right out. Uh, he should have pointed the official, told him he was going to do it. It was that it was that wide open. What a very smart foul, and I think Danny's telling Eddie went a very smart play. 
Palomizio played in 59 and 60 games when he was at Purdue for two years. We played, we played him uh, when he started for Purdue a couple years ago. Misses the free throw. Here comes Tatum. Scarberry, the trailer, Hicks in the lane. Ten-footer, too soft. Smith tried to save, hit him in the thigh and banked out. Henry tried some diplomacy on the fly, but it didn't work. That's that's when Purdue had a guy by the name of Cross. Russell Cross. Big Russell. Here at University Gym in Muncie, Indiana, looking on is their ball club. Ball State trails Ohio U 28-23. Cardinals basketball. Rick Rowry with it in the near corner. Backs up basically what, what we were talking about, Kevin. By Ball State's 10 for 23 and uh, OU's 13 for 24 uh, from the field. Better than 50, about 52, 53 percent shooting for a high U, and uh, 45 or so for uh, Ball State. And most Battles of those are the Paul outside. Barron. Sorry, Daryl. Most on Paul Barron is his third, Daryl, and he'll be yanked immediately. And Robert Tatum will check in. That'll hurt him. Now, Barron is the assist man, number one in the MAC. Just a little better than seven per 119 for the year in 17 games. Now, plus, he's averaging about nine points a ball game. And I tell you, he's very from downtown. Marks Clarks to the line. Played for Jake Thompson in Indianapolis, Howe High School. 6'5, 215, a junior. Can get his ball club within three. And does. You know, all these ball games that get the build up to be in a high scoring things, most of the time it still settles in to be defensive games <laughs> when it boils right down. That's a good observation. Shelton to Rowley on the break. Rowley, a transfer from IU after his freshman year there with Bobby Knight and Bloomington. IUPU branch. And hey, Rowley, uh, Played in one game at IU, then broke his wrist, and that kind of ended his career at IU. He was a fine high school basketball player. We tried to recruit him at Miami. Uh, he's out of Muncie. Right, Muncie Central. Excellent, high, excellent student, not, uh, fine high school player. Tatum started last year for uh, for this ball club. Good rebound by Larry Reed. 28-25, and again, Ball State on the verge. They could fall within one here with a minute and a half remaining in the first half. Now, Rowry played for a guy by the name of Bill Harrell of Muncie Central, who is a real figure, a character, colorful character in Indiana high school basketball annals. Clarks comes over the back. Not a very good shot selection by Paul Ambizio that time, taking the clock down at one. And that's exactly what uh, Al Brown's telling him. They were trying to work for the good shot, and, uh, and uh, he, threw, he threw it into the locker room. Eddie Hicks to the line. Eddie is 73 percenter with his first trip to the charity stripe. 28-25. Oh, you leading. Ball State, uh, Ball State give him a pretty good looking on the boards at 21 to 14. I think their margin was something like 4.9. Their rebounding differential. I think Eddie. Ed, Eddie's telling everybody to take his picture. He looks pretty here at the free throw line. <laughs> He can turn that ball over just as he gets it up and sort of cocks the wrist, brings it up, and then lets it happen. He's got six. Eddie, two or two from the line. 30-25. Shelton gliding across midcourt. Slams into Starberry. No call. Shelton out of control. Gives it to Reed. Palombizio spinning. Follow away footer. Glances off the iron. It'll be green ball. Yeah, it was off of, uh, off of the ball state. It was off of Mark Clark. Alan Bizio now two for ten from the field. Here's Tatum stop and go dribble. They'll use a they'll use the uh, 45 second clock a little bit. They can take it down have about 20 seconds left to play. I'm sure that's what they'll try to do. Nice feed inside uh, from Eddie Washington to Henry Smith who says the second time's always better. He's got his first two 32-25. Uh, Pombizio just didn't uh, didn't make any attempt to try to, to foul him. I guess he wants to stay out of foul problems. He's got two. 
32 seconds remaining in the first half. Ball State down by seven. To the front running Bobcats of Ohio University, seven and one in the match. And as Darrell pointed out, they won three of four out on the road in the match. And playing extremely well without their man in the middle, Vic Alexander. Air ball. Rebound Rowry for two and maybe more. This is a way uh, the guy, uh, he shoots an air ball and uh, he, Rowry just picks it up. He just happens to fall into his hand. Gets going to make a three-point play. Great way to end the half for uh, for uh, Ball State to give them some momentum. Of course, Ohio U hates to see that. Uh, they had a nice lead, and uh, they, hated, they hated to see that happen. Rowry, a former Indiana High School All-Star, misses the free throw. 32-27. Last second shot. Good if it goes. It doesn't. That's the end of the first half from the University Gym in Muncie, Indiana. One of those teams right there in the middle of the pack where with a win tonight they could suddenly be back in the running because that would mean oh you would go seven and two and then you'd have three teams all at five and three depending on what they do of course this week we're talking about Toledo Miami and Kent State all at five and three so it's still very close in the Mid-American Conference score here at halftime 32 27 and Darrell let's take a look at the scoring at Ohio University up here at the end of the first 20 minutes of play well Kevin we see the scoring for Ohio University here uh, even scoring Scarberry eight Tatum uh, six uh, uh, they're doing uh, uh, you know they're going to get balanced scoring in there from their uh, from their uh, outfit most of it uh, it seems like anyway from those perimeter players Scarberry a guard Tatum a guard Hicks uh, he kind of mixes it up a little bit and Washington a guard off the bench as well Let's take a look at Ball State scoring, and Pat Ambizio held to five points, his lowest first-half output of the season. Well, the, as we uh, we talked about during the uh, telecast, they're doing a super job with their change in their zones. Wesley's got seven, Reed six, and uh, uh, so I think is that the holding to 27 points is about as uh, as good as you're going to do, especially at home. Palambizio, the nation's number one scorer at 28 points per. You're going to see his only field goal and make that one of the two field goals of the 10 attempts that he made in the first half. They run an out-of-bounds play where he takes the ball out of bounds, throws it in, they work it around, and then he posts up. And there's the, I can remember him scoring, as I said, the uh, OU guards who had been doing a good job drop back, didn't drop into the key, a super job of holding him to two baskets for a half. And the, the stats, uh, uh, the Bobcats aren't shooting the ball very, uh, uh, they're shooting it at 44%, 45, I guess, actually. And uh, OU and uh, Ball State shooting at 40%. Free throws, uh, 50%, and uh, 67, uh, 66 for Ohio U. The rebounding is 19-19, uh, but uh, uh, Ohio U kind of caught, got back caught up because they were behind early. Turnovers, uh, not much difference there in the, in the uh, well, I guess, uh, uh, four turnovers that's a possibility of uh, eight you get eight uh, points that you didn't get and eight you give up and uh, so uh, it's a pretty good first half for a, for a high you being on the road I think Ball State's going to try to come back I think they're going to try to get the, uh, the ball to Pombizio I think they're going to try to get the crowd get the crowd in the ball game OU's going to continue to try to play the good sound change in defenses and I thought that was the key the first half they changed their defenses within the zone they played all zone but they changed from a, to a 2-3, to a matchup, to a 1-3-1, one, one, but mainly matchup and 2-3. Very effective. Ball State, a very efficient team at home. They are 6-2 here at home. But OU has had very good success on the road in the match where they won three of their four games. Eddie Hicks will inbounds. The Bobcats leading here by five as we get underway in this. I always thought the first five minutes of the ball game, the first five minutes of the second half, and if it's a close ball game, naturally the last five minutes are very important. This they set the tempo for the ball game, and the first five minutes here is going to set the tempo for the for the entire half. Remember, Palombizio, a very physical player, both offensively and defensively, has two fouls. Paul Barron, who is not on the floor for the Bobcats, with three. Eddie Washington will start in his stead and automatically picks up the slack. He's got five points. And he's got a nice-looking shot. He, he'll take the shot.
Chesser in the far corner. Jump passes out head of the circle here to Wesley over to 40. Shelton back to Chesser. Well, Ohio University. There's Palambizio's first attempt in the second half, and it's a swinging right handed hook off the baseline that caught iron. 34 29. A minute elapsed in the second half. Washington starts up, kicks it off his knee. Scarborough, a good shooter. Both ball clubs are picking back basically up the same way. OU's back in their zone, and uh, they're playing a matchup zone now. Shelton jump passes to Palambizio. Good call. Hicks was moving in under him before the shot. Good call. That is the third foul on Eddie Hicks. Fouled way early. We see the we see che, uh, the chess are going to Palmizio, but he's thinking uh, uh, the the basketball is being shot, so uh, it was a good call. Stanfell was uh, Stanfell was already posted up, trying to box out. He took his eye off the ball and it cost him. That's a pass that is not going to pay off. Larry Reed tried to force it to the baseline to Mike Chesser, who, for one, was in no position to do anything offensively, and two, was covered by a bobcat. Palambizio swings it out back. Reed pumps, heads to the lane, off to Chesser. Three seconds in the lane on Palambizio. 36-29, 18-28 remaining in the second half. When you play uh, in a post and uh, post up as uh, often as he does, uh, that's a tendency that uh, you do. He was mad at himself. He knew it was. A, he knew he was in there. Look at Stanfield push and shove down low, and Palombizio banging away at it. Uh -huh. Comes to Wesley. That's off an OU player. Cardinal basketball. left-hander. Stanfield pushes. Palambizio to the line for two. The uh, Ohio, Univers uh, Ohio University uh, uh, playing the matchup zone as we talked about. Ball State made an adjustment at the halftime. They're going to put a man on the uh, between the foul line and the baseline and then they're going to ro roll a man to the low baseline and then they're going to post Palambizio up and they're going to overload that matchup zone. They've done it twice down the floor. It's been very effective. Very good adjustment by Al Brown at halftime. Eight points for Palambizio. We'll see the next time down, Kevin, if we can pick up that overload. Palambizio played for the assistant coach here at Ball State in his high school days at Michigan City Rogers, Bill Hahn. Danny's got nine. The same place that uh, Del Ray Brooks is from and uh, Rob Towery at Miami University, also played at Michigan City Rogers. Fine basketball school. Stanfield, turn around left hander, leaves it short. Shelton the rebound, breaking free. He's got white jerseys ahead of him. The Bobcats fill the lane. Palambizio, jump hook. Oh, no! Shelton did not touch the ball. I thought they were going to blow the whistle on that. Give the hoop to Palambizio. He's got 11. Shelton came within a, a hair's width of touching that ball for basket interference. Foul on Shelton. Watch here, how close Shelton is to this thing. Here, here we see Pombiazil making that uh, quarter turn at half hook. It's tough to stop. Bounces up. I don't know. He may have got it. <laughs> hard to tell. That was it's hard to tell. That was uh, Derek Wesley. I said Shelton. Derek Wesley coming awfully close to touching that ball. 36-33, 17-10 remaining second half. Here's John Rhodes into the lineup for Stanfell. He walks. Three point. 2-2-1. Two, two, Here's a 2-2-1 two, two, uh, full court press that the high yield just tried to, to destroy the timing. He's in his rhythm, and he wants that ball club fired up. You can see him. 
They're 36 35 now. They're really uh, going into him now. And, uh, a big steal by Derek Wesley. The crowd on their feet. Ball State a chance to take the lead here. Alan Bezio really bumping inside, trying to get open. Cross court Wesley to the baseline. Foul on the offensive man, Derek Wesley. Derek Wesley charges his Paul second Bezio, foul. They've got uh, all four baskets, and he's got all four of the baskets his second half. Had five and now 13, right? He scores in a hurry. Correct. 13 points, 36 35. OU leading. Road side post. Over to Hicks. Tatum with it. Robert Tatum. Adam Bezier tapped the three. Picked up by Larry Reed. Again, both State with a chance to take the lead. Reed, great pass to Chester. Blocked by Rhodes. They're going to call a foul on Rhodes. Paul State will send Chester to the line with a chance to take the lead. We get a chance to see this particular foul. They doubled up on Pombezio so bad. They wanted the goal tend as well as a foul. The proper call. Uh, they doubled up on... Uh, Inside on Paul and uh, nobody, the guard didn't rotate down to cover that back door. This is exactly what a high university didn't want to happen, and uh, is to get uh, get uh, Ball State get them tied, and uh, get the crowd in the ball game. From Ball State standpoint, uh, I think that three point, that two point play that they got near the half, fired them up. Um, uh, getting some points now, and that makes them all play better. Chester drops them both their first lead since one to nothing. Chester with three. The ball tournament, March 7th through 9th at Centennial Hall in Toledo, Ohio. The tourney ticket includes the men's quarterfinals, men's and women's semifinals, and the championship game for just $24. Write the Toledo Chamber of Commerce, 218 North Huron, Toledo, 43604, or call 419-243-8191. The Mid-American Conference Championship Tournament. With Daryl Hedrick, Kevin Calabro in Muncie, Indiana, where the Bobcats, who have led since the tap of this game, have now taken a back seat to Ball State, 37-36. Ball State's second lead of the game. They led 1-0. Eddie Hicks races the baseline. Gets it inbounds to Tatum. Full court pressure, Daryl. Full court pressure. Al Brown made a nice adjustment on that zone, and uh, they're overloading the zone, pulling the backside out. That's opened a little bit up from Tom Vigio, and plus, if he is not, if he is covered, then they have a backside man open, and uh, that's a very good adjustment. And a high university is going to have to adjust their zone, or they're going to find the same thing. Paul Barron has been missing in the first five minutes of this second half because he's got three fouls. He's in the lineup. Off to Scarberry. Misses. Barron's got the long rebound. Patience right now for a high university. Ball State's one that wants to play up tempo. Picks. Eddie looking for the three-point play is bumped by Chesser. That is the second on Mike. Hicks goes to the line with a chance at two. He's scoreless here in the second half. He had a couple of field goals and uh, two of two from the line in the first half. That's Mike Chester of Noblesville, Indiana. As they say, got the roll. Very colorful display here by the students at the University Gym in Ball State. Better than 7,000, literally. Standing room only and packed to the rafters. Hicks with eight. Darrell pointed out in the first half they were talking about this maybe setting an attendance record here at Ball State. Shelton across midcourt. 38-37, Ohio University leading. Five minutes gone in the second half. Playing without Victor Alexander, we probably will not see him at all in this game. That's what we've been told. 
Hicks with a good interception of a Shelton pass that was awfully flat. Tried to force it to Palabizio. Alexander make that Hicks try to no-look the pass over there. Gave it right away to Reed to Wesley for two. Wesley's got nine, 39, 38, and Ball State takes the lead back. Hicks working on Chesser and again draws the foul on Mike Chesser, his third. Hicks the quicker of the two. Yes, he just made a move, and uh, he, just, he, he knows he can blow by uh, Chesser, and that's exactly what he's doing. And Mike has got to respect him from inside of that 12 to 15 foot range because Hicks can fill it up from the outside as well as post up and play on the glass. Coming in is Marks Clark. He's going to... He's going to try to give him a little break and plus get some muscle in there. And again on uh, Eddie Hicks. Eddie Hicks, a type of uh, a player. He, he's not the best outside shooter in the world, but he's really got good speed and he'll take you to the hole. Hicks, three of three from the line in the second half. Five of five for the game. Picks of 73 percent from Lewisburg, North Carolina. Slim <laughs> that one off, and the rebound comes to Derek Wesley. 39, Ohio University and Ball State University. They have really packed that zone in. They're almost giving that outside shot. Shelton. Shelton had difficulty in the first half finding the range, but... One of four in the first half. His first offering in this game is good. Barron with a great move down the baseline. Barron's got four and the pace quickens here a bit. 41 all. OU tried to get a half court 2-2-1. Two, two, it was a little late getting it set. Everybody filling it up. Mark Clark has a half dozen for the game. Barrett again will take his man to the right of the lane as they clear it for him. Now back outside the stadium. Offensive foul on John Rhodes off the ball. Foul on Rhodes is his third. Quickly Richard Stanfield comes sprinting here to the scorer's bench and he'll check back in. 6 245, replacing 6'9 and 230. They've got Victor Alexander, the starting center, on the bench with leg problems, 6'7 and 240. So they've got a lot of power in the middle. OU does. 43-41, Ball State two-point lead. They're looking for more. 13-19 remaining in the first half. And make that in the ballgame. OU's in that 2-3 matchup. actually scored that he backed it out uh, kept his poise and hit the open man there's what a floor general can do for you 43s 12 23 remaining in the ball game Palabizio and Sandville exchange words Ball is called on Ohio University's. So, but it's fun to watch, and uh, you know, obviously, it can't be all real, and I don't think it's all fake. Well, my it's, question, you know, my, my question is this, okay? This stuff is making big money. Whether it's fake, whether it's entertainment, whether it's not a sport, who? Chris Shelton has been the assist man for Ball State this year with seven. Looking for a three-point play, leaves it short. 
Back in the rebound down, pushed by Starbury, no call. Starbury goes out of bounds. Ball State ball. Here you see they're playing a little kickball right here. And he's smart enough to knock it off of the uh, OU player. Good play. 44-43, Ball State leads by one with 12 minutes remaining in the ball game. Rick Rowley back in the lineup. Alambizio down low. Turn around. Alambizio's got 15. That's his move. He likes to get that ball in a low post and, and turn to his right shoulder in the keyhole. Green timeout. Danny Knee is all over Richard Stanfield. He says, I want that man cleared out of there. 46-43, Ball State leading by three, and we'll be back after these words on Sports Time. There's a style in you was two of ten in the first half with five points. The lowest first half he's had this year is the nation's leading score. But he has now posted ten points in the second half. Ball State shooting 18 of 35. OU 18 of 39. Palabizio is 4 of 4 here in the second half. Well, Ohio U's put Henry Smith in for Stanfield to see if they can do something about this. L. Smith is in and so is John Rhodes. He's alternating with Stanfield throughout the game. 46-43, Palambizio goes down, so does Rhodes. Garbury fires long range. Clark tries to save it to the corner. Tapped out of bounds, it'll be OU ball. Ball State leading by three with 11 and a half minutes remaining in the game. Here at the University Gym where they've only lost two of eight. Scarberry has stayed consistent. He's got a dozen points very quietly. He filled it up in the first half. He had eight. Well, they ran a double pick on the baseline and ran him through the double pick, and Ball State uh, didn't get through. Ball State again in that 2-3 zone. They're matching up. travel violation and and uh, watch the board play it's starting to get very physical inside on the board play they're dropping uh, three green shirts around uh, Ambizio and so uh, just watch the action Tatum handling the ball over to Smith down low Rhodes the left hander jacks it up misses rebound followed by Smith taps out of his hand Shelton's got it on the break 46 45 Ball State leading Rowry to Shelton Airborne the jumper right there Shelton's got a half dozen. Ten minutes now remaining in the ball game. Scarberry, 7 of 12 for the game and 12 points with it. Now over to Hicks. Nice drive. That's Tatum. Tatum's got nine. 2-2-1 two, two, press. Three-quarter court, 2-2-1 two, two, press. Trying to force a turnover. Now they'll drop back and and uh, let's pick up the action inside on the uh, Pombizio. A lot of pushing and shoving going on. Now Rhodes holding and now the foul call. Rhodes, Rhodes has got four fouls. Watch the arm across the chest here. Here you see in the replay the whole, it's a little bumping and charging everybody. Everybody's fouling, and uh, the official just happens to see the, uh, the, uh, the hole. They could have called about 48. <laughs> they sure could have. 
48-47. Ball State leading by a one. Palombizio goes up to rebound and came over the back of Smith. And Dan Palombizio's got his third foul. Here's the here they're jockeying for position. Ball goes up. Now you watch. You can just see the fouls going on inside all over. He goes up. Now he he happens to be uh, be the one get uh, caught. That Ball. inside play is very physical as it is most games, and you can call them just whichever way they're looking. Paul Barron, he likes that spot, zipping down that right of the lane on the baseline. He's picked up three hoops from that very area for eight in the game. Plus, he'll take it. He's replaced Scarberry, who was, as we pointed out, 7 of 12 with 14 points in the ballgame. So they've gotten great production from Barron and Scarberry. Wesley with 11. Ball State's changing from a man to a 2-3 zone right now. Change it up. Ball State's been man. Now they're going 2 3 zone. Trying to change the tempo. Tatum. Robert Tatum, he's got 11, and the perimeter shooting for the Bobcats has been phenomenal. attention to Tom Bezio and he just got behind him. He took it downtown. It's known as El Stuffo. <laughs> the highest percentage shot in the game, huh? Daryl Hedrick, Kevin Calabro at a packed gymnasium, University Gym in Muncie, Indiana, where Ball State leads Ohio University 52 to 51. This game's is this game is a is boiling down to what every thought everybody thought it would be. A good barn burner. Fine Mid-American Conference basketball. Good defense, good offense, physical play. Henry Smith will inbound. Ball State in a 2-2-1 press for the few times. And they're going to drop back and uh, go 2-3 zone. Scarberry, he's good from there. He's got 14. It's automatic for him when he gets open over there. I tell you, they, uh, Tatum and Scarberry, like we kept saying over and over again, they're excellent outside shooters. OU has 23 rebounds, Ball State 25, Bombizio has five. That's a very First good half. stat for OU, considering Alexander's not in the lineup, but he averages eight a game. That's Westwood. right. Nice box out on Bombizio. They cupped that basket out of that two, out of that matchup zone. A one point, Ohio University Bobcat lead. Six and a half minutes remaining in the game. Crunch time. Ball State stay in 2-3 zone this time, and I'll tell you this. If OU hits it, they won't be they won't be two three zone the next time down the floor. Henry Smith on a good pass from Barron. They, they got behind the zone. Two two one. A bothersome half court trap. Everybody in a high U is just about in the red. Chesser's returning back into the ball game for Clark. Kevin probably tried to get some uh, experience back in the ball game. Clark came in for defensive purposes to stay on Eddie Hicks, who had taken Chesser down low for a couple of hoops in the first 10 minutes of this half. 439 remaining in the game. Hicks to the line. 
He'll get another. Eddie Hicks, after hitting five of five from the line, has missed his last two. He's got nine for the game. Ten for Hicks, who averages ten of all game. 56-52. Bob can lead. Four and a half minutes to go in the game. 2-2-1 two, two, press back to a matchup zone. Shelton threw it away. Good read by Barron, who stepped right in front of Chesser for the interception. He, he was late getting there. That ended up being a good play for him. He was out of position, but he turned it into a good play. Ah, OU's, uh, OU's uh, spread the floor. Little delay action. 28 on the shot clock. Four minutes remaining in the game. Barron with it. Little change of strategy here. They're starting to milk the clock with uh, four minutes to play. And a four-point lead. Henry Smith pump fakes, dribbles in, leaves it short, rebound Chester. Bad shot selection at this point in the game. Larry Jones, a senior guide from Roosevelt, seeing his first action in this game. Flipping it over to Shelton. Shelton with eight points. 56-54, 324. Darrell, that's one of those shots you pointed out before. You, you moan when he puts it up. No, you no. smiling when it goes through. Oh, no, no. Great, great shot. <laughs> there an alley -oop going up misses. Rebound by A couple bad shots. Uh, you know, this point in the ball game for a high U. That's a uh... nice cross court pass from Larry Jones. Alan Bezio was wide open on the weak side. 56 all, 2.55 to go. Stay with us. This is going to be a rock him, sock him right down to the wire. Tatum. OU's taking uh, two bad. Uh... Well, I think four shots the last two times down the floor, and it's cost them two baskets. Smith, Alan Bezio's got three fouls, and Smith takes it over, and he's got six for the game. 58-56, 2.24 remaining. Chester glides into the near corner with it. OU, OU still playing the matchup. And really keeping it tight. Wesley had the rebound and tried to put it up in one motion. He might have been wiser to take it down and flip it back outside. But hindsight is 20-20. 58-56. OU leading by a hoop a minute 55. Tatum with it. OU still content to spread the floor. But look at who they have in the high post. They're trying to put Tatum in there and let him work a little one-on-one. Uh, little Henry Smith, great-looking freshman, 6'5", from West Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He ranks right up there with the two freshmen playing at uh, Bowling Green. Yes, he does. Those two 6'5 freshmen. A lot of nice freshmen in the thing, and you know they've got a lot of, uh, the, the Mac's got a lot of fine individual basketball players in the conference. Uh, uh, I forget how many players, over 20 points, seven over 30 points scores. Uh, with uh, Pombizio leading the Nate Harper. Uh, excellent basketball players, excellent coaching. It's a fine, it's a coaching league. 58-56. OU looking for a lead. Hicks walks. A minute and a half to go in the ball game. OU seems to be a little impatient right now. They've had three, three turnovers, uh, two bad shots uh, uh, the last four times down the floor. When they have patience, they score. A minute 18 remaining in the game. Ball State down by two. OU looking for their fourth win in five tries on the road. Wesley gave it away. Now you'll... Now they're going straight delay. They're going straight delay. They'll, they'll put everybody in the corner, rotate the corners, and let Tatum play in the middle. There's about 51 seconds in about, uh, on, the, on the game 
and there's about 20 some seconds on the shot clock. So uh, this is a very, very key possession for both ball clubs. Oh, nice play. Hicks with 12 points, and again, Paul Barron comes through with a tremendous assist. Ball State calls a timeout. They're down four. 29 seconds remaining. Land down to a certain uh, on the clock and go. Uh, by the same token, uh, Danny Nee and Ball St and uh, High U, they're thinking good defense. Whatever you do, don't foul. Also, if it's a miss, get the ball, take it down the floor, uh, and uh, they'll spread it again. And they'll, he's telling them probably to protect the basketball because they could go for a foul right away. So there are, there are four of the five players that I'm just presuming will be on the floor. Baron Hicks, Scarberry, Tatum. The lowest percentage of the four, Baron, 74%. Tatum is a tremendous shooter at 81%. Henry Smith has been that freshman out on the floor. And you would have to think once Henry Smith touches the ball, you're going to clobber him. He's a 48 percenter, 15 to 31 I don't, on the stripe this year. I don't imagine he'll touch the ball. They'll keep it out of his. You know, everybody's talking about checking your foul sheets and saying, well, we got to foul such and such. But you know, it's not that easy. The clock's gone, and and uh, I would imagine they'll keep it in their free throw shooter's hand. They've got to get the hoop first. The hoop is the important thing. 29 seconds remaining in the game. 60, the hoop's 56. the important thing. Shelton into Wesley. It's there. He got it. And they'll call a timeout. And pressure the ball inbound. And uh, took him nine seconds to get it, Daryl. Pretty good work. Now the thing that uh, now the thing that they're going to do, I would imagine they'll try to uh, uh, get that inbound and then maybe foul. That's a decision they're going to have to make. Well, you boxing fans definitely will want to be with Sports Time tomorrow night at 11 o'clock Eastern. It's Super Fights of the Month. The Legend of Laredo, Gabby Canizales meets Jeff Whaley. In a scheduled 10-round Bantamweight bout, Canizolas is the U.S. Boxing Association Bantamweight champion at Super Fights of the Month from Atlantic City tomorrow night at 11 o'clock Eastern right here on Sports Time. Well, we've got a heavyweight matchup here tonight in Muncie, Indiana. Anytime you play ball in the state of Indiana, you're going to have a lot of people show up to see you play. This has been a packed house here tonight, 6,745 on hand, literally standing room only all the way to the rafters, everybody on their feet. 20 seconds remaining in the game. Ball State trailed by five at halftime. They led only once in the first half at one to nothing. 60-58 the score now. OU leading by two, and they've got the ball, Darrell. Well, they're going to try to uh, steal the inbounds pass. Uh, and if they can get it without fouling, or uh, I think they're probably going to foul as quick as the ball comes in and uh, hope that they uh, don't make it. Hicks runs the baseline, gives to Barron, a good ball handler. Cross court to Scarberry. Over to Tatum. 12 seconds. Smith fouled. Basket's good. No, I called the foul before. Nope. Whistle before. It's on Wesley, and it's a one and one. The basket will not count. They were trying to force that trap, and uh, and uh, I don't know whether they wanted to foul, but oh, you got the ball out of the trap, got it down the floor, and uh, there's still a lot of time left. Scarberry is a 73 percenter. He's yet to shoot from the line tonight, but he's a good shooter overall. He missed short. Ball State balls. Nine seconds remaining. 60, 58, seven seconds. Shelton pulls up, leaves it short. Three seconds. OU ball, and that's the ball game. OU wins. Shelton left it short. With two seconds remaining in the game, Shelton had the shot they wanted. 60, 58 the score. The crowd here in Muncie stunned. Scarberry missed the free throw. Ball State had the rebound and a chance to tie it. They just couldn't get it done. Well, OU comes out of this one with a few battle scars, I want to tell you. They go to four and one out on the road in the back, and they are now eight and one for the year in the Mid-American Conference overall. Big, Ball big State win. goes under four, make that under 500 at four and five, and eight and 10 for the year overall. That was a big, big win, uh, Kev. That gives them uh, uh, four, uh, four road wins, and uh, uh, that was a hard-fought ball game. That's, uh, uh, that's uh, too bad that somebody's got to lose a ball a ball game like that. 
We're going to take a break on the line and be right back to talk more about this exciting game. 60-58, the final here in Muncie, and it's OU's ball game. We'll be back after these words on Sports Time. We're back at the University Gym in Muncie, Indiana. Darrell, excellent ball game, 60-58. Shooting percentages in the first half were low, but they really lit it up in the second half. Ball State got Dan Palombizio back in the offensive flow, and he picked up 12 of his uh, 17 points for the game in the second half. They even had a chance to tie there in the last 10 seconds of the ball game. Well, that's exactly right. Uh, as Palombizio warmed up to the, to the uh, contest, uh, the, the fans got into it. Uh, but uh, you've got to give a lot of credit to Ohio University. They fought back. They got behind. They, they didn't lose their poise. Uh, and uh, I thought the defensive job they did, they, they, it was a very hard-earned, but it was a very important win for Ohio University on the road. That's the fourth road win. And like I said, to win conference championships, you win at home and pick up as many road games as you can. 60-56 was the score. Derek Wesley came down, hit a shot. They had 29 seconds to go. That uh, got Ball State within two. Scarberry goes to the line, misses the free throw, and Danny Knee had to be wanting to climb a wall at that point. He's struggling. He's a great shooter, yeah. but he's not shooting well from the free throw line this year, and it's just something he should have shot the ball going in for a layup. But I'm really proud of our kids there. I thought we played good defense. We played hard. Great Ball State crowd. Yeah. Dan Palambuzio is one of the premier players in the MAC, and I thought we did a good job team defensively. It was a good victory for Ohio on the road. I think that was a, that's what we were just talking about the whole ball game, uh, Danny. I think uh, uh, you took your ball club on the road, and uh, whenever you can come in and, and, and win a particular ball game like this, with both ball clubs played well, but your kids kept their poise, and I think did the things. I think that uh, your matchup did a very good job, and uh, and again, you pick up your fourth road win, and uh, that that that's going to make you tough to uh, uh, tough to find. But it was a nice job on on the part of your ball club. I was really proud of the kids there. We've had we've struggled in years past on the road winning a game like this. We'd find a way to lose in it. But now we're finding a way to win it like your team last year. I don't think we have any great stars. We won without Alexander, which I think is really a key because you know what a force he is. Mm. We have Rhodes, a freshman. We have young kids, Stanfield, learning how to play. And they just showed a lot of heart. But we got good chemistry on the outside. Barron, Tatum, and Scarberry. The walk-on football player, Eddie Washington, did a fabulous job coming in. And it's a team effort. And... I think that's what's going to take to win the MAC as a team effort. Danny, you held your own on the boards without Alexander. Like you say, that's a key point for the uh, folks at home in Ohio, uh, the Ohio University fans. What's the status on Vic Alexander, and when can we expect him to come I back? I don't think he's going to be back for about a week. I don't think he'll be playing Saturday either. He had one injury that started healing, and then he a, a pull of the Achilles tendon, and it's just a nagging injury, and it's really affected his play. But the chemistry of our team is going in. This is such a difficult place. Yeah. I thought it was deja vu. Last year we lost on a buzzer shot. The same thing, Shelton coming down the middle, and I thought he was going to hit it. <laughs> you know, it's well, wild. I think, don't you think, uh, Danny, that uh, with you have some young kids and all like that, but don't you, don't you think the chemistry, uh, your seniors, oh. uh, uh, and that's what it takes to, to win on the road. I agree, uh, Darrell. The poise of our seniors, you know, and Barron's like a senior. You know, he's been almost a three-year starter, but Scarberry, um, I can't even think of all the people now, but our kids, the nucleus of our senior class, of Eddie Hicks, what a great job he did defensively of helping yeah. out. And it's a real difficult game to officiate, you know, with the crowd and everything. And I thought the officials did a nice job. And it was a hell of a game to be on TV on sports time. I think it showed Mid-American Conference basketball at its best. Danny, thank you. OU now 14-4. and four. They are 8-1 and one in the MAC. Could be a runaway. Who knows? But stranger things have happened. The final score is 60-58. OU over Ball State here in Muncie. Our thanks to all the folks here at Ball State who've made it uh, such a pleasant stay. This has been a live presentation of Sports Time, the network with more live college basketball than any other. Stay with Sports Time. Coming up next, it's NBA Weekly and then more live All-American college basketball with the Oklahoma Sooners against the Colorado Buffaloes in Big 8 Conference action. This telecast has been brought to you by Exceptionally Smooth Mekalo. Where you're going, it's Mekalo. This is Kevin Kalai speaking for Daryl Hedrick. Thanks for joining us, and so long, everybody. This has been a live presentation of Sports Time.